their tongue if they want to. Talk, don't bother me. I want the whole world to know that I to Let Them Talk. I'm Paul DiRienzo. And I'm Miss Joan Marie Mosey. And our guest, Tim Keating. Very, uh, he's behind us. I don't know how well you can see it. But Tim, why don't you just duck over to the left or right a little bit. I just want folks to see the picture of you mm -hmm. holding your fist up. There we go. Oh, there you go. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, it's a great picture. It's Tim. And a very dramatic moment. Neck, very dramatic moment. Chained by the neck in front of the Mexican consulate on 39th Street here in New York City. And, uh, Tim, it's a tragic story. I mean, we had a few laughs about, uh, you know, your predicament, but we know that it w you were there for very, very serious reasons. And uh, we know that uh, Brad Will, who Johnny and I both knew from the Lower East Side and were friends with from the squatter and housing movements there, um, was murdered by the police in the state of uh, Oaxaca in southern Mexico, in the city of Oaxaca. And we played some tape of what was going on, including your chaining and being removed by the police using that jaws of whatever they are <laughs> that they the use. The giant saw, circular the giant saw. Circular saw, <laughs> right? And uh, cutting the uh, the fence you can see hanging in the back there. And, and you were holding that fence? Well, uh, That looks like a pretty darn heavy fence. Actually, uh, in, in the, this bit of a melee that ensued, uh, just as I was locking myself to the gate, and... Um, and the gate came loose, basically, yeah, it, didn't it, it? Someone, I think one of the uh, security people with the consulate lifted the gate after I was locked to it, lifted the gate off its hinges. And which, you know, when, when your neck is locked to something like that, uh, it was a little, uh, a little unnerving. Um, especially when there, there was, this, uh, it was quite a lot of people um, being uh, very rowdy right up at the gate at that moment, a lot of uh, police and, and whatnot, so I didn't really know what was going to happen with the gate as it fell to the ground, but someone, uh, someone in the crowd just picked the, picked the gate up and wedged it up over the posts uh, of, of the other half of the gate and the, and the right, gate so posts. the gate became horizontal. So somebody, yeah. somebody was watching your back or, yeah. let's say, your neck. Yeah, yeah, right. exactly. Uh, it was actually, it was one of, one of our support people. Yeah. Right, tell us... You know, we, we've discussed this a little bit last week, but for folks who might have missed it, because our understanding is we got more headlines about our protests here in New York and support of Brad and the people of Oaxaca in Mexico mm. than we got here in New York, unfortunately. But I'm not, a, I don't, I, that's what I expected yeah. <laughs> from past yeah. experience. And yeah. I know that's the struggle and that's the price we pay here. Um, tell us a little bit about why you were there. What was Brad's relationship to you? And, and maybe even go back and what happened to Brad. Tell us how you heard about it, maybe, from your point of view. Well, I heard about it from a, a phone call from another activist friend uh, who had, had uh, received an email. Uh, an email went out um, just, I guess, a few hours after um, Brad was murdered. Uh, folks in New York City uh, within the indie media um, uh, organization and, and uh, uh, other people that uh, were close to Brad uh, were notified from folks in Mexico that, in fact, Brad had died. And um, uh, so an email went out to on what is basically the New York City protest list. Sure. And uh, and so um, I wasn't on email at the time. I got a phone call from a friend of mine who saw that. And um, so a lot of folks got together over the next couple of days. Um, you know, certainly just to grieve and uh, be together, but also to see what we would want to do about um, his being murdered. And, uh, now, you're the head of an organization called Rainforest Relief. Is that how you knew Brad? Was he connected yeah. to your organization? Yeah, something? I mean, loosely, you know, as a small organization in New York City that does uh, direct action and protests, we're, you know, we're part of a... a crowd of folks that are involved in any number of, of issues and, um, you know, we kind of, I don't know, maybe a little more radical uh, New York City activist crowd. Well, tell us a little bit about your organization and what its mission is. Yeah, Rainforest Relief, uh, we work to reduce the destruction of rainforests by uh, limiting the use of tropical wood here in the U.S. 
uh, we found through many, many years of, of looking at the issue that the, the main vector for deforestation in the tropics is the first entry by mostly illegal loggers. And so when you look at um, what, why those loggers are there and, and, and what, uh, what species they're cutting, anywhere from 70 to 100% of what's cut by those loggers that, that have enough money to bulldoze new roads into primary forests um, are being exported. So clearly, for us, it's very, very clear that the demand for imported tropical woods like mahogany and ipe and greenheart, um, those, are, those are woods that are common coming out of uh, South America, um, and then other woods from Africa, like African mahogany, zebra wood, um, uh, Akume, and in Indonesia, certainly Luan, uh, now Niato for outdoor furniture, Balao, things like that. Those are, the demand for those woods is what's driving that initial deforestation. So if we, we work to reduce the use of those woods here and thus kind of pull the plug on the, that initial entry into the forest. And once those roads are there, unfortunately, it's very, very easy then for deforestation to continue. So if you can stop that initial entry, we believe that that's the most effective way at preventing deforestation. Who are some of the worst offenders staying on this issue here in the U.S.? I noticed on your website you mentioned uh, this old house, for example. Yeah, we, you know. Um, oh, bummer. I we, love uh, that show. <laughs> But I, I did notice that they were advocating like mahogany furniture. And yeah, and, and, and Ipe Deke was yes. one of the things that we originally uh, oh, we have uh, the ringer on, on today. I don't know what that's all about. <laughs> um, Let me turn the ringer down. Go ahead. But also, New York City really is, is one of our uh, priorities. The city is, what we've calculated is that the New York City government itself is the largest consumer of tropical hardwoods. Well, I noticed there was North a... America and possibly the world outside the tropics. Oh, wow. I noticed there was a park bench yeah. photograph on your website yeah. where communities using a uh, certain type we'll of wood. To... Okay. <laughs> You're on the air. Hello? Hi, how are you? Good, Hi. how are you doing? I'm good. I want to talk about the rainforest. Okay. I was wondering, what do you guys think about the tangerine crop this year? Because, you know, I love tangerines, and I went to uh, the food store yesterday, and I wasn't really expecting to find them. But I don't know what that's about, but it didn't seem like it was going to be the right direction. <laughs> it didn't sound like it was really about rainforest. Right, it was about uh, rainforest, right? Although so, I did also notice a banana project. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, you know, again, our, our, our top focus as an organization is tropical wood. But if you look on our website, go to, uh, what, to uh, what to avoid, what to choose, mm -hmm. we have a list of about a dozen different products that are um, in one way or another responsible for deforestation. What do you think of things like laminate flooring, where it's not made from wood? Is well, it's certainly better than some of the other materials. Like, you know, we're, we're just uh, very, very incensed when we see the, the popularity of, of Jatoba or Brazilian cherry flooring and all these other exotics now. Exot, exotic hardwoods are just really, uh, in terms of use, really, really on the rise. The flooring, but also for other things. In New York City, um, you know, you mentioned park benches, yes. but it's not just park benches. Um, ten, over 10 miles of boardwalks have now been completely converted oh, wow. to tropical hardwoods from Brazil. Um, also, Greenheart. Uh, from Guyana being used for uh, the Staten Island ferry terminals, all the wood uh, of the ferry terminals, and, and also the decking of the Brooklyn Bridge and the benches up there. Uh, African rainforest woods, a wood called Eki, the entire deck of South Street Seaport is all Eki, and also all the subway track ties. Um, um, and well, how do you it goes research on and, on. and, and uh contact, do you, do you work in an educational way, like to contact people who are doing large projects and say, right, right. you know, that's wow, a, you might want to consider... That's certainly the first approach, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Um, for instance, uh, in our Portland chapter, uh, we just uh, had a um, uh, very short relationship with a uh, developer there and uh, worked to uh, secure a commitment that uh, uh, he would no longer uh, put in uh, exotic wood flooring 
in the buildings that, that is building. Okay. So, um, you know, there were protests involved there. But in, in other cases, we do. Sometimes how frequently is there just cooperation because the person yeah. was ignorant, not in a, I don't right. mean that in a mean way, but simply right. didn't know. I would say, um, I would say most often mm -hmm. that's the way we work. Uh, in our outdoor furniture campaign, for instance, we're, we're going after uh, the use of, of woods like Niato, Galao, Garapara, uh, a whole slew of woods now coming in from uh, Southeast Asia and, and um, South America to replace dwindling teak. Um, and uh, so far, uh, four or five companies, uh, so the large companies, Crane So Barrel, rainforests uh, aren't just in South America. They're found oh no, all over the world. That's right. And in fact, uh, the majority of our rainforest wood import is from Indonesia. Isn't right that now. interesting? Yeah. Let's take a call. Okay. You're on. Hello? Yeah, the time of crops pretty abundant this year. I wasn't really expecting to find too many of them. I went down to the grocery store and I... Uh, <laughs> this the, is, this is the fruit shopper. The fruit shopper, he's still at it, right? <laughs> Why don't we... Um, we still have the sound effects guy. Right, we have all the technical problem like with the phone, so I'm on. just going to... Uh, detach it, and we're just going to have to tell the story without the phones. Oh, that's Sorry too to bad. Sorry to say, I just can't stop it from ringing. Yeah. Um, but let's continue on and talk about really what was going on, what what happened. To the best that you can talk about it, and I know that it's sort of limited. What well, also that about. we were going to bring in how Brad had participated yeah. in your organization before we got right. to that. Well, let's talk more about who Brad was, because yeah. I don't think most of the people listening have, have heard of this. It's not really been in the media. We spoke about it a little bit last week. Where is Oaxaca? It's in Mexico. Southern it's, Mexico. It's in southern Mexico. And what you see very little about what's going, what's happening there in the media. Right now, there's trouble happening in Oaxaca, Mexico. Do you know a little bit about the trouble that's happening in this place called Oaxaca? Mexico? Well, I know a little bit. Uh, you know, as a rainforest activist, this really wasn't something that, that was uh, very much on, on our, our radar. But uh, I've, I've learned, you know, quite a little bit since uh, Brad was killed. Um, basically, there were uh, protests uh, begun by teachers um, in the town square. Apparently, this is something that, that happens every year um, when the teachers kind of go on strike and demand uh, higher pay or whatnot. And uh, in this in this instance, the governor of Oaxaca uh, went ahead and sent in troops, and a couple of teachers were murdered. Right. And um, this is last summer. Yeah, this is exactly. It's like um, six months ago. Right. Or so. And the governor is Ulysses Ruiz. Ruiz. Yeah. Right? yeah, yeah. He's the governor. So and apparently uh, elected under very, very shady circumstances. A lot of people said the elections were were you know false by. Right. And he's and, with uh, the former ruling party, the PRI. Right. 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 So uh, this came to a head basically last weekend. Not not this weekend, but the weekend before. Well, well, yes, uh, but before that, I mean, you know, when the teacher, or a couple of uh, teachers were killed, a lot of uh, people came out and started supporting the protest, and the and the um, the local people kind of took over the government of the town. Um, you know, they took over building after government building after government building. They took over town squares and um, and uh, basically were holding the town for months. And um, the governor had left at that point and was, was, was not there for four months before Brad was killed. And Brad was, uh, was down um, basically documenting, videotaping, and, and documenting and supporting this um, movement for direct democracy. And uh, the, the number one uh, uh, demand on the part of the protesters was that the governor resign. I see. And um, so, when, you know. Other people have been killed as well, and the same at the same time that Brad was killed, uh, two other people were killed as well. As well, he was actually down, and I've seen the footage. He was filming, yeah. and they targeted him and actually shot him down. It wasn't right. any sort of crossfire. They tried to say yeah. it was a crossfire. You can see quite clearly from the oh, video no that they yeah. they basically hunted him down and killed him. Well, yeah, from my read of the video, uh, they uh, they were they were going after some some guys that, uh, with guns that were shooting off guns randomly sure. into the in, into the crowd or. And, uh, and and these uh, um, apparently are people that are undercover, you know, plain clothes, paid by uh, the governor or the ruling party or the police or whatnot um, to try to um, increase the, the violence going on there. So they were trying to create the excuse for the feds, the Mexican federales, to come in. 
and um, and and so that Ruiz could get back into the <laughs> into power. Actually, have something to run. Exactly. So there were there were shots being fired, and and a group of folks, including Brad, he was videotaping went after the guys with the guns. Now we know who that was. We know yeah, right. who shot Brad. His yeah. name is pretty well known now. Yeah. Uh, there was several other men who were involved. You can right. see them. They're wearing these red shirts. Right. Uh, they're police officers. Some. Uh, Others, city officials, city officials um, and the police there have this reputation of being pretty crooked anyway. Mm -hmm. I've had a number of people from who traveled through Oaxaca say, oh, that cop, Grasshopper, they call him, was a well-known drug trafficker. Wow. You know, yeah. that's for people who go there on vacation and said, oh, yeah, yeah everybody used to talk about that guy. Yeah. So I don't yeah. have to back that up and find out more right. about that, but I've heard right. Right. These are rumors that we're hearing from right. our sources. Right, right. right. But uh, yeah. certainly, uh, you know, from what we've seen, even, even as re with Reinforced Relief, what we've seen in many, many other places, similar places, you have very often very similar situations where the police are working hand in hand, uh, in, in, in mostly in illegal ways with say corporations or, or loggers or whatnot doing extraction and, and uh, you know whether it's Malaysia uh, you know police beating the the uh, indigenous protesters uh, uh, on behalf of the logging company or Nigeria with with the local uh, local government uh, um, you know the oil companies in the with, with the oil company Shell and Mobile um, yeah, the yeah. exactly so you know so this is charged them with terrorism executed activists that absolutely uh, along with eight others and uh, sure. yeah so this is very common uh, in many parts of the world right it's not unusual and maybe that's why it's unfortunately not very coverage. common yeah. Yeah. yeah so um then in the couple weeks now since this whole event or including brad's being shot and killed uh there's been massive protests in oaxaca uh, just uh, just this weekend november 2nd it looked like hundreds of thousands of people have marched through the center of town and that the police and the local, the federal police, the federales, have come in by the hundreds and they're there and they're in the riot they're, gear. They're riot gear and they're beating up. And they're people. all wearing masks. The pictures we've seen from uh, our friend Mario Menendez, uh, newspaper Por Esto, has shown police with their faces covered. Right. Right. And uh, the people <laughs> marching and the buses on fire. We're getting a lot of very good information from Puesto. If anyone speaks Spanish or you can take it to Babelfish and translate it to, to read the stories because it's not being covered in the U.S. press. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So uh, right now the situation is that the people have re after being pushed out of the central square, the Zocalo as they call it, have actually been able to retake it and now we're back to where this all began. began right. the people are back Although they never the lost the, the radio station at the university. Oh, the PPO, right. which <laughs> they can, held that. Right, right. I believe you go to <laughs> Indie Media site, for example, you can click on the Apple link and listen to it and there's a translation. And they're doing a subset of right. concurrent translation. Exactly. Yeah. So it's um, quite an amazing story, which is which is a, uh, right. exactly why Brad was there. I mean, yes. Cover yeah. what was happening yeah, and yeah. because so few people are covering it and this is a very important issue because of course we know Mexico now they just had an election just like we're having today and that election is under a tremendous amount of cloud uh, as the one today is probably going to be under a cloud as it was two years ago in this country uh, and right. um, you have the uh, Obrador who lost by a small amount who's claiming now that this is a false election and he has a, his own uh, cabinet his sort of cabinet in exile and now just today, uh, explosions all over Mexico City. I think I was reading five bombs, right. three went off. Right. Massive explosions against corporate and a, a corporate sites and corporate. They say the 40 top multinational corporations doing business in Mexico. Uh, they were hit today. Uh, the election offices were hit today by a huge bombing campaign, and uh, credit was taken by uh, one of a myriad. I, I get confused with all these alphabet soup radical groups the ep uh some group i don't know what that means i guess the army people's army um have taken credit for that so uh mexico this country right on the border with the united states that people forget exists is in turmoil even as we're focused on other parts of the world i think that the turmoil is just in iraq or just over here and just over there it's happening right here right under our own noses here in the northern uh, hemisphere um so now I guess we have a little bit of background. Hope folks understand who Brad was and what he was doing in Oaxaca, where Oaxaca is, what's been happening there. Uh, 
Brad, we knew him from the squatter movement. I'll never forget Brad Will walking out on top of that building on Fifth Street when they were actually taking the big steel ball and trying to smash it down. And he walked out with a red flag standing on the top of the building as they were trying to knock it down. If you can imagine a more courageous act. We were all on the street screaming. <laughs> and they, they slammed on the brakes and stopped that demolition. And in fact... And then do you remember that it took them a long time to find him? <laughs> right. He yeah. hid out the in the building. The building. Right. <laughs> so now we know the type of person Brad was. Tell us a little bit about your work with him in the rainforest. Well, you know, he was a... He, Tim uh, Keating, by the way. He was a, um activist out in the uh, Pacific Northwest. Uh, was on tree sets out there for a number of... Uh, a number of the forest areas that were being uh, clear cut logged by tree sitting, uh, climbing up a tree yeah. and sitting in that tree, right? Yeah, and okay. uh, so he was an experienced climber mm -hmm. and um, rope climber. And uh, so, one of the things that he would uh, help us with uh, when we were planning some of our banner actions was uh, training. Um, training us uh, how to get up on something yeah, like basically. a pole, like was like one of the things that happened at the rally right. on Monday. Yeah. Right, yeah. right. And uh, so I think I first uh, I first met him uh, at um, at his squat, but uh, again at um, a ruckus training camp, and uh, and then uh, you know he was he was just around uh, at at so many events uh, in in New York, and you know you'd see him in a rubber billy. Uh, rally or or um but also whenever he was around and we needed someone uh, to help us uh with reverend some technical billy, issues course, does, i'm not sure if he's real or comedy with reverend billy um, it is, uh, <laughs> yeah. he's not really a reverend right well, he does but public he, service he, announcements on uh mnn, MNN so right, you've right, probably so we seen all know him on yeah. mnn very yeah, well yeah, right yeah. <laughs> so uh and so he was with reverend billy who some folks might know and people who watch uh, mnn probably know very well um so uh what now is the situation with the protesters? How many were arrested? What kind of charges are they facing? What kind of charges are you facing? There were there were twelve arrests at the action. There were hundreds of people out there that day, as you can uh, well see from all the videos and the photographs. Um, and uh, three people were released early out of the precinct, and I think eight went, um, you know, to be processed uh, overnight. It, it, Unfortunately, it always takes New York City overnight to process. Um, so we were out, I think, at um, sometime in the next afternoon. But um, you know, you go to the tombs, mm -hmm. they call it the tombs, which is central booking. Yeah, you spent some time there. Downtown. I imagine. I've been there a number of times. <laughs> so you're familiar with it. <laughs> yeah, process. yeah. It's it was kind of uh, uh, very yeah, very familiar. Almost well, I won't say home away from home, but because um, it's not very well, comfortable. Like boarding school. You get yeah. the <laughs> Yeah, it's not a comfortable place at all. No. You know, you're sleeping uh, often just on the concrete floor, uh, especially uh, when you're downstairs in the in the holding cell. It's, it's almost always very cold, and you you know the the food is just so abysmal. Nice. If you get it, if you get it, I mean, no, they didn't they didn't feed us for I think 11 hours uh, one stretch. But uh, um, so what are you facing? Uh, I'm facing um, uh, criminal mischief criminal trespass, um, resisting arrest, um, a reckless endangerment, and what they call OGA, or, or um, obstructing government uh, administration. Sure. And these are all misdemeanors. Um, most likely, well, we, my experience in the past, uh, the uh, reckless endangerment is something that the police throw on there because, oh, you endangered the police who had to cut you off. Well, that usually gets thrown out. Um, and also then the uh, criminal mischief, which is a uh, charge about wanting to damage property. That was clearly not our right. intent either. Um, we didn't cut the gate. The police cut the gate. Uh, I fully assumed they would cut my chain, not the gate. But um, again, so that would probably... Are they going to charge you for the gate? Yeah, I mean, that's what the They'll criminal mischief them. charge is. Yeah. Um, uh, for the Mexican consul? I'm not, I doubt it, but uh, it certainly yeah, it could happen. Yeah. We got a call. Let's give it a shot. All we right. Phone working now. Hi, you're on. Hello. Oh, so the gooseberry was uh, found out. Yeah. This is a very persistent guy. Yes. <laughs> persistent <laughs> guy. Today. So, uh, so, so wasn't there one folk who uh, is actually facing more serious charges? Yeah, yeah. Um, one of the protesters is charged with um, assaulting uh, a police officer, and that's a that's a non-misdemeanor. That's a uh, would be a felony, but um, 
uh, we don't know where, where it's going. And of out. course, he's he's denying that he assaulted anybody. Yeah, so. yeah, yeah. I mean, there was such a uh, a melee um, uh, up at the front doors that um, of the consulate. Of Mexico, yeah, consulate. yeah. Um, well, everything sort of happened at once that day. I mean, I described hurt. it to Mario as a three ring circus because suddenly one guy was shimmying up a pole. Yeah something was happening at the gate, someone else was lying in the street, and it seemed to all happen simultaneously. Yeah. The other thing that happened was that suddenly, it seemed like almost everyone in the crowd was wearing a white t-shirt with a red yeah. paint splotch for the, with the bullet, bullet hole. Yeah. Yeah. Let me ask you about two of the other people. And I, I ended up uh, putting on, you know, um, one of the flowers. Yeah. Oh, I, I saw the flower. Right. I, I managed to, uh, yeah, I managed to, um, yeah, shimmy it up my leg. Okay, I couldn't you, grab you it. I couldn't. I couldn't bend over. I'm going to show you a picture because I think folks might want to see it. Let's yeah. get you up. You can get up. And okay. Yeah, and sure. Maybe just careful. And you can yeah, watch uh, your that's mic. Right. Well, watch your mic. It's all right. Okay. You're all right. There you go. Okay. And uh, there, there folks is, can yeah. see Tim, and you can see he's wearing the red, flowers the red down flower there. down there, mm -hmm. and sure, you can see the chain around his neck. It's really an iconic photograph. You can see the chain. Let me see better. You can see the chain around his neck, and you can yeah. see the red flower, his fist in the air. There's the fence behind him. Yeah, and um, the horizontal gate like this. Yeah, right. And you can see it's where it was. Quite amazing, uh, really. Heavy looking gate. And, a, um, so we're running out of time. Uh, Tim uh, Keating, give us is there a website people can go for to keep yeah. track of this and find out more about what to do? Well, you know, to keep track of this issue, I think right now the Indie Media, New York City Indie Media site is probably uh, the best. Indymedia.org. Yeah, and nyc.imdy.org. Uh, right. And give the website for your organization. Right. Uh, Rainforestrelief.org, just, uh, you know, just the way it sounds. Um, and uh, we have a uh, right on the front. Uh, uh, page, um, you know, uh, a story about uh, Brad being killed and, 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 and also the, the memorial. Tell what's us next? About yeah, that. what's next with the yeah? There's a memorial this weekend, um, St. Mark's Church, um, and and folks again, I think uh, can can uh, find out more specifics about that at the Indie Media site. Um, but there's there's um, two um, two things planned this weekend at least. I mean, there's going to be a procession and from the church uh, procession to a community garden. There's going to be uh, you know, drumming there and all sorts of uh, uh, events at the church itself. The, the memorial is going to include people speaking about Brad, and, and um, uh, some of Brad's writing will be uh, will be spoken. We have we have um, um, recordings of Brad singing. Uh, you know, he's a songwriter, and guitarist, and Tim Keating. We're coming to the end. Thank here. you very Thank much. Thank you very much. Thank for you coming. very much for having me. And, Good luck and thanks for your coverage of this. Oh no, we'll be playing more too.